Administrator Bolden, what a joy to have you back here in the UK. Thank you. Mr. Ambassador, it's, it's an honor for me to be back. Uh, every time we come here, it's really exciting. And, um, you know, we came in yesterday, visited the Science Museum, and we were not disappointed at all. Fantastic. Yes, Last time we were together, I shared with you the results that I found um, after I had been to 50 high schools or sixth form colleges all around the UK. Yeah. Now you're back. I've been to 80, roughly 100 kids at a time. Wow. And as you remember, I have them each uh, give them an embassy pencil. They can keep that. And uh, I ask them to write a picture or write a word about something that uh, concerns them or frustrates them about America and what we're up to. Yeah. And we talk about that. Then we get to the happy bit. And they flip over the card. And it's like, what do you like? Or what gives you hope? Or what inspires you about the United States? And I just wanted to show you the results after 80 sixth form colleges. Wow. There you go. You've got American dream, technology opportunities, education, freedom, and look at that, NASA. That's, that's good. <laughs> I'm very happy to see that. And, you know, because our partnership with the UK Space Agency uh, is growing, uh, we're really, really, really excited that uh, in November we're going to launch Tim Peake, mm. who is uh, UK's own astronaut. So they'll have a modern day hero that they can think about. And so when you go to schools next year, hopefully uh, they'll want to talk about Tim Peake and we'll try to get you as much information as we can. You know, last time we were together, um, my gift of thanks was one of these cards. It was. And in return, I got this <laughs> awesome framed thing that talks about the uh, special relationship in space between the United States and the United Kingdom. Would you mind just talking me through quickly about, this is a look back at stuff we've done it together. Is. And it, then also maybe, as you it, were saying earlier, a look yeah. ahead. It, the central point of the, of the, other than the two flags of our nations that, that symbolizes our partnership, uh, is the crew patch. And uh, the significant part is the guy at 3 o'clock, Nick Patrick, right over here, uh, who is, in fact, uh, a U.K. citizen. Uh, Nick came to the United States, as many people do, looking for an opportunity to, to go to space and, and did fly with us. He's now a retired astronaut, but still mm -hmm. very, very busy. And so that's Nick on board uh, STS-116, I think, which was his first mission, um, a, a, an image of the, of the, um, the whole, the, UK, the whole right UK right there from space. And then two, of the, two of the satellites that, uh, with which we have collaboration. So what we want to have all the school kids see starting in November are pictures like this as often as we can from space, you know, of Tim Peake. Um, I'm certain that we'll have him doing downlink opportunities where he can right. hopefully talk to some of the kids here in the UK. Uh, I would I would suggest that we we try to make sure we get an opportunity for you here in the embassy to host a group of school kids and uh, and then you can I be accept. the host. So my communications team is probably going, oh my goodness, what's he promising? But we can do that. Uh, I meet these great uh, young men and young women all around the UK. They're writing down NASA. Mm -hmm. We talk about it. Um, are there some specific things if they want to raise their hands to do yeah. more, learn more? Um, the, what the, should they do? The big thing right now is to go to the NASA website, www.nasa.gov, and in the little search box put in intern if they happen to be college age students. Okay. Because for the first time this year, we can now take international students into our intern program at a, wow. on a limited basis. So if there are students from the UK who are interested in working at one of the NASA centers, they can look up the international intern program. Uh, the other thing is that they should learn as much as they can about the UK Space Agency. Uh, David Parker, who's the head of the UK Space Agency, and I talk all the time about collaboration. We're really excited about the exploration path on which we are now embarked with Mars as the ultimate destination, uh, the UK, other members of the European Space Agency and our other partners, uh, trying to figure out how we get humans to Mars in the 2030s. So we're really excited about that. Uh, Tim being on the International Space Station is a very important precursor because station today is our, it's our stepping stone to Mars. That's where we're doing the sort of the, the semi-finishing touches on technology development, on understanding the human mm. body before we move out to cislunar space, orbiting around the moon for a, probably a period of five to ten years um, to give us the courage to say, okay, it's now time to launch them and send them off to Mars. That is so cool. Do you love your job? I love my job. I love, the, I love my people. I, uh, I happen to have the honor of working with the most incredible group of people. And you've had a chance to, you know, to meet our team when we, yeah. come, when we come to the UK. But I, I, I can only imagine what it's like here in the embassy, but nobody has a group of people like I do and, uh, and a job like I do. I said I had to ask the last question, but this is so, <laughs> this is so cool having you here. I've got to ask one more. Um, 
advice you would have for your 18-year-old self, yeah. or let's say these wonderful uh, young men and women, these yeah. British uh, students who are interested in NASA, interested yeah. in their own country's space program, what advice would you give to them? You know, if I look back at my 18-year-old self, I, I, I think I'm a good example of, of, of what I'm going to tell them. They, they mm. really need to focus on studying hard while they're in school, make sure that they kind of become the best at whatever field they like. No matter what they want to do, whether it's banking, finance, science, engineering, they really should focus on as much math and science as they can while they're in school. Um, and if they go to college, and college may not be for everybody, but if they do, they should still continue their focus on science and math. I never dreamed of being an astronaut, never dreamed of flying airplanes. I changed my mind very late. Uh, it was How actually, old were you? Uh, oh, I was, uh, I was 18, as a matter of fact. In fact, I was 21 when I decided that I was going to change my course in life. I was going to go into the, into the Navy out of the Naval Academy. I decided I was going to go to the Marine Corps because of a person who had really impressed me. And then after that decision, later decided that I wasn't going to be an infantry Marine. I was going to go to, to aviation and become a pilot. That was something I had said all my life I would never do. So it was, I was 21 years old, second lieutenant in the Marine Corps, when I made the decision at my wife's counsel, by the way, oh, uh, yes. that I was going to go to flight school, and the rest is kind of history because from there, you know, I decided I wanted to be a test pilot, and then someone convinced me that I should have the courage to apply for the astronaut program. I did, and I was fortunate enough to get an interview and be selected. So that's, I would have never been sitting here today if I hadn't had the, the background in science and math that allowed me to take the turn to go into, into aviation. Well, thank you yeah, so much, Minister Bill. Thanks very much. Really appreciate Thanks it. Much.